guys. How are you doing? I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. I see we have some folks already in the chat room. And so that is so awesome. I see Diamond and Cheryl Gay, Gail, sorry, <laughs> Gail, Sassy, Vilma, Dolphi. I see Mary, Veronica, Renee, Karen, Susan. Hey, Norma, how you doing? And so I hope everybody is doing well. Um, one of the things that I was doing this week is I've been working nonstop on um, a whole bunch of Etsy orders. Um, this month, so far, I have gotten 67 orders, and that's only on Etsy. Um, and the word has gotten out in my community that I do um, embroidery. So I've also had, you know, besides the 67 orders from Etsy, I have also been getting orders around the community where I live as well and other neighborhoods around here. So it really has been kind of crazy, okay? Um, but it's a good crazy, right? And stuff. But um, one of the things that went through my mind this whole week is, you know, um, while I am working on some of these projects, what I really should be doing is filming myself while I'm working on them. And I did film myself while I was working on a logo for a business. Um, and I am going to put that up on the channel. I was trying to put that up um, yesterday and my iMac kind of act up on me. So it, you know, it didn't make it. So hopefully this weekend I'll be able to get it. It's already filled and everything. It's just a matter of putting everything together and just um, putting it up on the channel and stuff. So um, and you guys know me. I, I do my videos very raw. I, I don't do all that fancy stuff and everything because my whole thing is to just really give you guys the information that you need so that way you guys can go ahead and do your own embroidery. So I guess Mello wanted to say hi. <laughs> right, Mello? Okay, good boy. Anyway, but anyway, um, this, you know, while I was going through all this craziness and stuff of filling up these orders and, and doing some stuff, um, I was coming up to some challenges, right? And one of the things that I thought about was, you know, um, I have been doing uh, machine embroidery and sewing for quite some time. And I figured, you know, let's, um, I, I wanted to do like a recap of things, you know, that, um, that I have gone through, um, lessons learned, um, and some of the things that, that people should really think about if they're thinking about going into the world of embroidery or if you are in the world of embroidery and, you know, you're going through some kind of hump or something, you know, some, some uh, issues and stuff. So um, first let's talk about, you know, uh, some of the things, you know, one of the things that really popped my head, okay? Um, I remember when I first started to do uh, machine embroidery, right? I wanted to just start really simple in a small machine. And, you know, I started with a single needle machine, which was the um, Brother SC 1900, um, where a lot of my videos are about, okay? Uh, because I like to help people, especially when they're trying to learn, um, you know, their skill, you know, trying to up their, their skill in embroidery. Um, one of the things that I did was when I was looking at videos and I was um, researching about embroidery, I came across Eve and I, I think you guys have seen her. She sometimes is in our chat and sometimes she watches me as well. I love watching her show. She has a channel called The Baby Booty. So I was watching her a lot and she had a really great video talking about you know, myths about embroidery. And the first thing and the the thing that always pops in my mind is when she came out, she said, embroidery is not cheap. And it's not for those that are light with the wallet. And boy, did she really hit that one out of the park because it is so, so true. Um, that is something that, you know, at first I was thinking, well, you know, what you know, what, how bad could it be, right? You know, you just buy a machine and you buy your thread and you just um, buy a stabilizer. The machine comes with hoop, you're good to go, right? Well, no, it's not like that, okay? I mean, that is something that you actually start to learn as you start to embroider and you start realizing that, you know, yeah, you, you have your machine and your machine came with a hoop but the thing is, there are so many different ways to get things done. 
And sometimes that hoop that they give you, which of course is this one, all right, you get your little five by seven hoop and you know, this is the one that comes with your machine. And I'm not saying that it's a bad hoop. I'm not saying that at all. Still use mine too, okay? Um, but the thing is, there are other hoops out there that can make certain things a lot easier, okay? Like for instance, you know, um, and there's also different ways for you to use a hoop as well, okay? So that's something that I was learning as I was starting to do embroidery, right? Because at first I was putting in my stabilizer, right? You know, you put the bottom of your hoop and then you put your stabilizer on top, then you put your item on top and then I would take this and I would squish it down, right? So then it would, you know, you, you hit it to make sure it sounds like a drum and then I would think, okay, it's good to go. But you know what? It becomes very limited because what if I wanted to do a bath towel? Bath towels are very, very thick. What if I wanted to do like a jacket or something? Those items are very thick. They're not going to fit in this hoop, okay? So what ends up happening is you have to learn different techniques on how to use the hoops. And there are different ways like something called floating, okay? Floating is where you just hoop the, stu the uh, I was going to say stabilizer. <laughs> the stabilizer, that's when you hoop your stabilizer. And, you know, sometimes you spray a uh, temporary heat. Well, you do spray temporary heat, uh, not heat, temporary adhesive. Y'all know my um, my Spanglish, okay? For those of you that have watched me a, for a long time, you guys know I can mess up a couple of words, okay? That's the New Yorican in me, okay? And stuff. So anyway, and I blame my mother on that because she made me speak Spanish at home and then I learned English at school. And the next thing you know, I was speaking half English, half Spanish. And then, I, you know, all my words are just a mess. Melo, stop. Sorry about that. I think he's um trying to get something under the, the thing. Anyway, so you end up learning about different ways that you can use your hoop, okay? You know, and floating is one of them. And floating is something that a lot of people do. Um you know, that makes things a lot easier. For example, if you have a bath towel, bath towel is so thick that you're not going to be able to squish it in here, right? So what you do is you would just, um, you know, put the stabilizer in it, you hoop the stabilizer, and then you would use a temporary adhesive spray to put it on top, or you can use something called sticky stabilizer. So that's the other thing too. You know, you start learning about all these different techniques. You start learning about all these different um, ways to do things, you know, and, and then different products, right? Because, you know, this is really, really great. But then what I ended up discovering was I found out about something called a magnetic hoop, okay? Magnetic hoop is, this is really now the hoop that I use all the time. Um, I use this at times, um, but I use this for dinner napkins. If, if I'm embroidering dinner napkins and I need that third machine, right? Like tonight, I'm going to be using all three of them because I have an order of 16 dinner napkins from a customer. So I'm going to have to get that done tonight. So, um, I'll be having all three machines running and stuff. So, um, but this is my favorite for the simple fact that it makes it very, very easy for it to hoop onto the machine. And it also, it's a flat surface. And I love it because you don't get any type of hoop burn, even though you don't get hoop burn anyway when you're floating. That's one of the benefits of it. And that's the other thing too, lessons learned. You know, it's like when you're learning how to hoop and everything, you learn about different techniques and how what happens with certain items right there's just so much to cover there really really is um the the thing is also is um oh let me tell you about the other hoop because i just saw it right now okay then you have the 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 famous hat hoop okay love this love it okay if you want to do like baseball hats and stuff this to me is a must you can get away without using it you can do it okay i'm not gonna say that you can't um that it is this is really much it just makes it more easier to me okay especially if you have a structured hat if you have um a structured hat is one of these where you have a hat hold on one minute sorry 
Okay, I just had to take the dog outside because uh, Mellow can get very distracting. Structured hats is when the hat is kind of hard right here, okay? That's when you have a lot of structure. And this could be kind of really hard for you to uh, just lay it down on a hoop and then in broader, okay? Now, if you have a hat like this, okay? Like, um, and I got to get this back to Betty. My cousin uh, bought this uh, this uh, baseball hat, and this is unstructured. As you can see, it's really like very, very floppy, very, um, very soft. If you have something like this that's not even structured, it's not even hard or anything like that, this is much easier for you to lay down on the hoop for you to embroider on it, okay? All you have to do is just smooth it out, and all you have to do is just float it and stuff. This is very, very easy. However, though, but when you have this, and this is kind of hard, it makes it a little difficult. And that is when I really recommend that you get one of these. Because what this does is it has the lip for you to be able to put the um, this in here. And then you can, you're going to have to flatten this out in order for you to embroider. So, you know, um, there's just so many different ways to do things. And that's the, the other thing, too, is if you are thinking about getting into the world of embroidery, you need to really understand that it's a lot. It, it really is a lot. A lot of people that don't know about embroidery, sometimes they think, oh, you know, you just stick it in a machine and it goes. No, it does not work that way, which is why sometimes when you go to certain places, it is expensive to get something embroidered. There is, a you know, embroidery is really, it's, it's a skill. It really is. And you know, the more you embroider, the better you get at it. And you're going to notice that, you know, your stitching is going to get a lot better and you're going to understand the machine. And that's really when you know that you are really, truly getting to that, that, that point where you're, you're really uh, good at what you do. Um, you have to understand your machine inside out. You have to understand how that machine functions. You got to understand, um, you know, the different types of threads, the different weights of threads, okay? Um, the most commonly used weight of thread is usually a 40 weight. Now, if you are embroidering something that has very little, um, you know, fonts and it's very small in detail and stuff, you would not use a 40 weight uh, thread. You would use a 60 weight thread and you would also use a different needle. You would use a needle, which is like a 69, a 65, nine. Okay. Now I'm going to show you an example of that. This is an example of, um, I had a customer um, and she hasn't picked up her items yet. And I wanted to show you the final product and stuff. Um, I had, she had her logo and I had this logo digitized. And as you can see, the fonts, especially those at the bottom, these are very, very small, okay? Now, when you have fonts that are that small, you cannot use a 40 width, a 40 weight thread. So I used a 60 weight thread with a 65 nine needle, okay, 65 nine needle. Now, um, this is another thing. You got to you got to know your fabrics. You got to know the fabrics. You got to know the type of fabrics because you don't embroider the same with everything, okay? So, you know, depending on the fabric, that will tell you the type of stabilizer that you need and it also will tell you how much stabilizer you need, okay? When I did this embroidery, what I did was I used two sheets of cutaway and I also put um, a no-show mesh stabilizer to the fabric. The reason why I did that is because I already knew that by looking at the design, you can tell that right here where the two dogs are looking at each other, okay, this is very dense right there. So you don't want puckering. Now, when we're talking about dense, we're talking about places in your design where there is a very large amount of stitching, okay? Sometimes what happens is if you don't stabilize your product correctly, you're going to end up having something that's called puckering. And puckering is when the, um, the thread kind of stress the fabric, and then you end up getting like little spots in your fabric that's kind of crunched up, okay? Now, let me tell you the little story about this little baby right here. 
um, when the customer showed me what she wanted done, she um, she sent me a picture of the logo, but she sent it to me on a regular T-shirt. And it looked like a T-shirt like the one that I'm wearing now, okay? So the reason why I did the test stitch was because I was under the impression that the item that she was going to bring me to in broader was going to be of the same type of fabric, okay? Well, um, when she, she told me that they were smocks, and it's kind of funny because smocks to me is like jackets or something, but anyway, I, I didn't know what it, what it was, I don't know. I, I just, you know, I was just like, okay, you know, <laughs> but that's my fault, I should have asked. But she went and she, she says she ordered the, the items from Amazon, and um, this is what she ordered. And it's like little um, little jackets, okay? Um, and I guess hairstylist music because I think her company has to do, I think she's a breeder, I'm not sure. But I, I think what it is is dog grooming. So I guess she bought these jackets for her employees to wear while they're grooming the dogs. Um, and she wanted the company logo on that, which I was like, okay, cool. The concern that I had, though, when she came and she dropped off the items is that when I opened it up and I felt the item, it was like really thin. So I was just like, oh, my God. So I at first I kind of like freak, you know, you have that anxiety moment. Right. So I was just like, oh, my God, what what am I what did I get myself into? And then I was like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> Because it's a different type of fabric. So anyway, what I did was I just called her right away and said, hey, I would like to meet with you so that we can talk about it. And that's another thing, too, that that I kind of learned while I've been doing embroidery all these years is be upfront with the customer. You know, if you don't have experience with um, embroidering on a particular type of fabric, when they want something done, just let them know. Just let them know up front and say, hey, you know, um, I understand you want this type of embroidery. I haven't done it on this type of fabric. Um, I can give it a shot and stuff, but I just want to make sure that we understand each other so that our expectations aren't, you know, met or, you know, that it's all laid out on the table. Okay. Those surprises and stuff like that, you know, but she was really, really cool. She was really understanding and she was kind of like, I understand I know that, you know, she goes, I understand it is thin and stuff like that. It's not the same as the shirt. She was like, just give it a shot. If it doesn't work, then try on another spot of an area. If we ruin one, we ruin one. It's okay. And then, you know, we'll see if we can go with the other three. Well, I'm going to be honest. Good news. I mean, I was able to embroider this. I used the same method that I did with this. Okay. I did, and I'm going to turn it around. I did the no-show stabilizer, and I did two sheets of um, cutaway stabilizer, all right, the heavy one. And then what I did was I used my 60-weight uh, thread, and I also used um, the 65-9 needle. And what I really did also, which I think was really important to me anyway, you know, my machines run a thousand stitches per minute. What I did was I slowed down the machine to only do 500 stitches per minute. Okay. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to minimize any type of thread breaks. And I also just really wanted to let them, let it go slow. So that way it didn't stress the fabric much. Okay. And I have to be honest, I was, I, I am really, really happy with how this came out. I'm going to give you guys a close up. As you can see, there is absolutely no puckering at all, which is what I was really, really afraid of because I was thinking this is very, very thin, thin fabric. So I, I was kind of like, oh my God, I, all I kept thinking was it's, it's going to get embroidered and it's just going to like crunch up right you know and I was just like oh boy but I was so happy with it you know so I was able to do all four and I I just know she's really gonna love it I just I, I'm really like happy about this and stuff so another thing too that I wanted to talk to you guys because the reason why I wanted to do the theme of lessons learned this weekend 
is because I don't know if Liliana is on the chat room, but I have to give her a big thank you. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, you know, there was a time when I was very adamant on not embroidering on other people's products for the simple fact that I kept thinking, what if something goes wrong and I screw it up? And then it's like, oh, they're going to be feeling some kind of way. And then I'm going to feel some kind of way. Right. Well, I was talking to her one day and she came out. She said, that's fear. And I was just like, what are you talking about? You know, I'm like, no, it's not. And she's like, yes, it is. She goes, don't be scared of it. You know, you're not going to know if you can do it if you don't try. Just be upfront with the customer and let them know, which is the whole reason what I did with this. And I'm going to be honest with you. She hit it right on the, uh, I mean, right on the money. I mean, she, she it's so true. You know, if I would have shied away from this, okay, and I would not have taken this challenge, I would never have known if I was able to actually do this. Okay, so what this was an opportunity for me to see how good I really am. And I'm going to be honest, I feel like I passed the test because I was like, whoa, I was like, well, this is really like, this is good. You know, so um, take those challenges. Okay, and, you know, in embroidery. Okay, there's going to be there's just so many different types of fabrics out there. There's so many different types of uh, threads, different brands and everything like that. Don't be afraid to take on the new challenge because you can be missing out on an opportunity to learn. Even if you screw up, if you screw up, okay, so you screwed up, big deal. You know, um, I know that, you know, sometimes it, it is hard, you know, because you always want your things to come out perfect, but you have to, you have to, you have to take those chances and stuff. If you don't, you're not going to improve your skill in embroidery and you're not going to progress because what's going to happen is you're going to stay in your comfort zone and you're going to be like, okay, I know how to embroider well on cotton. So I'm only going to embroider on cotton. I'm not going to embroider on anything else. Well, then you know what? There's a whole lot of other fabrics out there and you could be missing out on business opportunities because you're not taking that step. So, you know, I mean, I am so grateful that she kind of like pointed that out to me. And then, you know, because I was kind of like, well, I don't like taking people's stuff. And then what if something goes wrong? She goes, just tell them up front, say, I've never done this before. I want to give it a shot. Where did you buy it from? And I think um, E from the Baby Bully, she mentioned that, that, you know, she, when she goes to embroider stuff and people bring that to her, she always asks, where did you get it? So that in case something happens, I can replace it. Another thing too is, um, and I want to show you, I just did this today and I, I literally, another customer came to me, uh, her daughter, I guess is, is in swimming and, um, I never did a jacket before. However, though, um, one of the things that I did was I told her, cause she asked, um, can you embroider my daughter's name on, on her, her swimming jacket? Right. So I never did a jacket before. And I said, well, it depends on the jacket because of course, you know, it, it depends on fabric, how thick is the jacket you you just don't know that not everything can be embroidered right i've always said that so um i just told her can you please just bring it by so that way i can take a look because you know you want to touch it you want to feel it you want to see how thick things are and stuff like that so she came and she came today and she dropped off the jacket and um as soon as i saw the jacket and as soon as i felt it i was kind of like oh yeah this is oh Definitely, I can do this, okay? So um, it came out really, really nice. Um, her daughter's name is Victoria. So I um, <clears throat> I was able to hoop the jacket really easy. Um, I You can do this on a single needle also, okay? Because like I said, all you got to do is open the jacket and stuff like that. Now, it is bulky because this is... This is a long jacket. It's very, very long. Okay. I just have it folded up. Um, but you know, she wanted her name right underneath the um the patch. Came out really, really cute. I knew that I could do this, not a problem. I was like, oh, this is a piece of cake. Because when I opened it up, and let me open it up so you guys can see. Um, it, you know, at first I was a little worried because, you know, it looked like it had like 
you know, like a corduroy look, you know, but when I feel it, you know, you can actually like feel this and I'm like, okay, it's not really like super thick. Okay. So I'm like, if this can definitely be hooped. So what I did was I used, um, tear, uh, not tear away, cut away stabilizer on, um, on her jacket and stuff. Cause you know, I, my rule is if you wear it, you don't tear it. Okay. So, and that's, that's the other thing too, that, that I just want to mention as well also is, you know, the lessons learned also with embroidery is learn about stabilizer. Stabilizer is so important. Okay. That is the first thing you do whenever you're embroidering is you're stabilizing your item. Okay. Stabilizing is what's going to keep the stitches intact for a long time, okay? Um, it, it helps to keep the integrity of the stitches in your design. So, but there are so many different kinds of stabilizers out there and it can be confusing as heck, okay? Because you have no-show mesh, then you have tearaway, then you have cutaway, then you have the different weights of stabilizer, okay? You got sticky stabilizer. I mean, there's just so many. And I'm telling you, if you were to look at my machine right now, um, not this one, but the one next to me, all you see in that is stabilizer. And they're all different types. And you have to know what to use, when to use it, and what to use with what type of fabric, okay? So that all comes in time, okay? As you are embroidering and, you know, it's all going to come in time. And, you know, the thing is, too, is your inventory is going to grow. I'm going to let you know right up front, okay? Um, I don't know if you guys saw an old video of mine where I talked about scissors. I mean, I have about, like, 15 different types of scissors. Every scissor has its own particular uh, purpose, okay? Um, you know, it can really, really get... Um, this is this is pricey. I am telling you. I mean, Eve Eve said it best. I mean, this can be a very very pricey habit. Well, not even a habit. A you know a business. <laughs> um, you know, so it's like um, you know you're talking about your thread. You're talking about your stabilizer. You're talking about your machine. Um, and you're also talking about your needles. Okay, there's different types of needles. Okay, different sizes for different purposes. Um, there is a article that I still use to this day, and I always tell people to please look it up. And this this is the article that I always use, okay? I have this printed out. I have it stapled, and it's right by my embroidery machines, okay? And it's if you Google Fabrics 101 Stabilizer and Design Guide, this has been the best guide that I have found online so far where you, it, it tells you the fabric, it tells you what's the best stabilizer to use for that particular fabric, um, the type of designs, whether you have a very light design, do you have a design that's very like dense, okay? Um, it also gives you um, tells you what is the needle size that you should be looking at in order to do that type of embroidery design. So there is just, there's just so much. Now, there, there is, I have a piece of paper because I know, as always, I'm always sidetracked, you know, I'm always all over the place. But let me go through what I wrote down in here, okay? Understand what you are using and why you're using it, okay? That is really, really important, okay? Under, understand your machine, you know, look at your project, do your homework, okay? Okay? You know, you, you got this project, you know what you're trying to accomplish. You have to do your homework and say, okay, this is the type of fabric that it is. What is the stabilizer that I'm going to need? What is the, the weight of the thread that I should use? What is the size needle that I need? How should I be hooping this item? Okay, because you got to remember too, there's something called hoop burn, which means that if you take an item and you put it within the hoop and it's in the hoop for a very long time, when you remove it, then you have like markings on your shirt, which is why a lot of people choose to float their items. Okay, so you have to, those are all to me, that's like the homework. Okay, you gotta, you got, you, you know what you, what you, what you want to do, 
but you have to think about all the steps that it takes to get to that point. And, you know, and it's really funny because a lot of times people, when they, they talk about, you know, embroidery, um, if, if you don't know embroidery, you really don't understand a lot of the things probably that I'm talking about right now, because there's just so many steps in it. Um, a lot of times when people ask about embroidery, they really have no idea. They have no idea of all of the things that you have to think about, all of the things that has to happen to actually make this design on this product. So, you know, um, but you have to think about that, okay? Um, there are so many resources out there. Um, hold on. He's trying to get in the, the thing. Be right back. Mello. Okay. All right. He is... Uh, he wants to be part of the, the, the party. You okay? You okay? You wanted to say hi to everybody? Hmm. You're all wet. Hope you were I hope he wasn't drinking water out of the toilet. Oh God. That would be not good. All right. So anyway, um, let's see. What were we talking about? All right. So I was talking about understanding what you're doing, um, what you're using, and why you're using it. Okay. That's all going to, that's knowledge that's all going to come within time and experience, okay? Every time you are um, working on something, um, and you, you're going to make mistakes. I'm going to tell you that up front, okay? There's going to be a lot of times when you get make mistakes. There are also going to be times when you may have problems, um, issues with your tension, okay, of your machine. And there's going to be moments where you're going to want to take your embroidery machine, just throw it out the window. Trust me, been there, okay? Now, I haven't done that, but I've been there, all right? And you're going to get, you know, pissed. But those are just the times that you just walk away, take your rest or whatever, and then you'll get back to it. But also, and keep this in mind also, when you make mistakes, when you're embroidering, that's an opportunity for you to learn your machine better, okay? Um, you learn, you start learning how the machine works and you start to understand the machine once you understand the machine and you know how it works your products are going to come out a lot better <laughs> this dog is a trip <laughs> okay right boo boo he's a trip this guy's a trip okay so um let me see what else do i have in here okay i also put down be adventurous don't let fear stop you and you have to keep trying until you succeed. Don't give up. So if you made a mistake, no big deal, you know, learn from it and just keep going and use the resources. Go to the Facebook groups, ask questions. You'd be surprised how many people are out there that are willing to share knowledge and help people out. OK, so if you make a mistake and you just don't get it and you don't understand Post a picture of the mistake on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. Um, it's called Happy um, Embroidery Happy Hour Adventures. You're welcome to join that group and, you know, post stuff there. Um, and we'll help you guys out, you know, um, you know, with anything that you guys need. Um, another thing that um, lessons learned that I that that I I learned and I really, you know, I did a video on this, um, but I. This is like a lot of people have issues with this pricing. If you are doing embroidery, okay, this and, and after you feel confident and all that kind of stuff, you're going to want to start to sell your services, right? Pricing is really hard to do, okay? Um, and you have to make sure that you are pricing your items correctly. Think about the amount of time that you are spending in front of these machines, okay, while you are watching that needle go up and down to make sure that everything comes out fine. Think about all the stabilizer that was applied to that project, the hooping, the machine itself, the electricity, and everything like that. And also think about, you know, how valuable is your time period? Okay. The time is really the worst. It's like, I, I'm always having problems with that and stuff, but you have to make sure that you price your items correctly. All right. Don't devalue yourself or your skill. Um, you know, you, if you're good and you know, you're good, then get paid for it. Okay. Um, you know, and don't be afraid when 
when you say a price, you know, that's your price. Okay. Cause I mean, that's how I do it. All right. I'll say, this is how much it is. That's it. You know, if you want to like do the, this is just me. Okay. But if you, if you want to just be, um, oh, well, I could get it cheaper Then I'm like, okay, go get it cheaper. You know, because the, the way I see it is, I know how good I am. <laughs> I know my value, okay? I, that, and that's it. This is this is my price, and that's it. I don't allow people to low, I think, what is it? Low ball you or something like that? No, it's not. It, it just doesn't work that way. Well, at least in my book, it doesn't, okay? Because I, I know I'm going to have a meal regardless, you know? So, um, you know, the pricing, you know, it can be kind of tricky. All right. But if you are really good at what you do, don't don't lose your confidence or anything like that. You know your value. Make sure that you are getting what you know, what you're supposed to get and stuff. Don't don't do that. You know, don't lower your prices and stuff like that. Um, common mistakes that I have made. OK, uh, there have been times where, you know, to me, the best thing to do is to have a space in your home where you can really focus on the embroidery. There is just so many different things and details that go into embroidery that you can miss a step and it can mess up your whole project. Um, one, one time I was working on a kitchen towel and I forgot to put the stabilizer. I hooped that whole thing and I stuck it in the machine. And you know what was so odd is it stitched out really well, but there was no stabilizer. So because there was no stabilizer, of course, I'm not going to give that to a customer because even though the product looked great when I took it out of the machine, I know that when it goes through the first wash cycle, that thing is going to crumble like a piece of paper. And I, it's just, mm -mm. so what I did with that towel is it became my towel and I went and I imported a, a whole other one putting the stabilizer in there, which to me, I thought that was like, how could I forget that? Because that's like step number one. So you could tell I was distracted that day. The other common mistake that you that a lot of people make is the um what is the um when you're 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 doing towels or you're you're working with some type of material that has a lot of fluff on the top, they don't put um they don't use knockdown stitches. Or they don't use the uh, washable water uh, soluble topping, the clear topping that goes on top so that it can help lift the stitches. Um, that is really important to do. Sometimes when you are embroidering and you don't use that, the stitches may look okay. But the problem is the longevity is not going to be there. The first wash, what's going to happen is the thread can shift and then next thing you know that fluff <laughs> around that um embroidery is going to pop up and it's not going to look as attractive as it did when they first got it so you know if especially if you are if you're making something for yourself you may not care because it's like it's for you and and if it if it doesn't look good in the wash no big deal but if you are um doing this um, to sell or to start a business, you want to make sure that when you create these products that you are actually doing them in the right way because the the longevity of that product is going to last. I hope I'm saying that word right, okay? The longer it lasts, the better, okay? I'm going to say it like that, okay? So anyway, <laughs> but um, yeah, and then also the wrong stabilizer. Some people use the wrong stabilizer. I saw a while back a lot of uh, people were making like birthday shirts and stuff. They were using tearaway stabilizer for the birthday shirts, which I was kind of like, ooh. Now, the reason why I say that is because tearaway stabilizer dissolves in the wash, okay? So, of course, if you're making children's shirts and you're embroidering the birthday shirts for them, chances are they're going to want to wear that shirt more than once, okay? I mean, especially the way kids are, you know, if you, they, they have a cute shirt and it has their their, you know, how old they are and it has is personalized with their name, then what's going to happen is they're going to be like, oh, that's my favorite shirt, right? So 
probably for the first six months or something like that, they're going to want to wear that shirt. Okay. So, but if you create that shirt and you're using tearaway stabilizer, what's going to happen is the first time it goes into the washing machine and, throw, and if they throw it in the dryer, hopefully they hang to dry. But if they throw it in the dryer, what's going to happen is when it comes out, that shirt is really going to crumble up. And then they're really going to have to stretch it out and try to iron it. Um, and I don't know how, how good it's going to come out. Um, the rule of thumb, usually it is, and this, this is the one that I use is if you wear it, you, you always use cutaway stabilizer because cutaway stabilizer is not going to dissolve in the wash. It's going to last as long as the actual fabric, the item. Okay. So to me, it's really important that when you are working on your projects and you're stabilizing, you're using stabilizer that you are very familiar, you know, or, you know, you take into account the type of fabric that you're working with and that you're using the right stabilizer and the right amount of stabilizer also, okay? Because like I showed you on the um, the smock that I did for my customer, okay? I used two sheets of cutaway stabilizer on that. There's a reason why I did that, okay? That fabric is extremely, extremely thin. OK, the thinner the fabric and the more thread that you're pumping into that fabric, the, the more chances that it's going to crumble up and you're going to get puckering and you want to avoid that. OK, that design um, was 17,500 stitches. So I did not want any type of puckering on that shirt to show at all. So, you know. Always remember that, you know, it's not, there's no rule of thumb. It's not just one sheet of, of stabilizer and you're good to go. There may be times when you have to buy thicker stabilizer or you can just use what you have, but you just have to double up on it because what stabilizer is supposed to do is supposed to give the fabric the strength that it needs in order for it to accept all those extra stitches that you're going to be putting on top. So I hope that's making sense to some of you guys and stuff. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about also is um, embroidering is a skill. It, it really is. You know, um, it's something that it you get better within time. All right. And as you continue to embroider and you continue to do it and do it and do it, you're going to notice that your embroidering the, the stitches is going to look more attractive it's going to look more flush it's going to look much better and then you're probably going to look at the first projects that you did where you were kind of like "Ooh, i that didn't look as good as the one that i'm doing now so it does get better in time okay you just have to keep practicing. You have to make sure that you doing your homework. You got to make sure that you understand what all the items are for, what their purpose is. OK, um, and there's just so many things in embroidery that, you know, that you have to learn about the different hoops, the different techniques of of hooping items. Um, the different fabrics, the different stabilizers, the different threads. There's so many threads out there. There's Madeira. There's um, this one. I've been using a lot of this one lately. Um, it's called Flory, Florinai or something like that. Um, I like it. They're very, very, very shiny. And they seem like they're very good quality. This is a 40, 40 weight. Is it 40 weight? I think it is. Let's see. Um, just says embroidery thread. It does not say the weight, but I believe this is 40. Um, you know, I do have 60 weight uh, fat, uh, thread. And one of the things, too, is I'm going to tell you, when I first bought the 60 weight thread, and this is what I did. I bought a set. Mello, I'm going to scoop back and I'm going to hit you by accident and I don't want to hit you. Um, I bought a set. I like Sim Thread. Oh, no, honey. All right. No, I, okay. I like the Sim Threads. These are all 60 weight thread. Now, one thing that I did not like is 
it had it, it came with a lot of colors but it didn't come with all the colors okay and i kind of wish it did you know um i am gonna say 60 weight thread is not very easy to find i'm gonna i'm gonna put it out there okay in certain colors i had to actually really go out there and 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 look and i even went and i bought some from uh from i went to what was it um all stitch all stitch.com and i bought some 60 weight uh thread and i got the big comb and you can tell the difference okay when you look really closely you can tell the difference between a 60 weight and a 40 weight a 60 weight is much thinner which when i looked at it i was i was like okay now i know why a lot of people recommend this thread for small tiny fonts because if you use a 40 weight thread it is going to look bulkier stop it with the bone okay so he is all into the bone and it's like wow i'm like okay mellow please oh and so all day he didn't want to play with the bow now he wants to play with the bow I dogs. okay anyway but um let me see did i miss anything um oh and yeah and well i i told you guys about liliana that she told me she said don't limit myself she she said let customers bring their own items she goes you know be honest about the risk and you know if you don't take the risk you're not gonna learn and it's it's so true it is so true because i'm going to tell you when the lady came with the the, the smoke right and i saw how paper thin it was oh here he goes with the bone i was like e i was scared to take the risk and which which i was kind of like okay i need to go talk to you you know and i went to go see the lady and i talked to her about it and i said i never worked with this before I mean, because it is, it is, you know, I mean, I don't know if you could tell when I was showing it, paper thin. I mean, I was kind of like, ooh. So what went through my mind was, oh, my God, I could just see it puckering all over the place. I'm like, okay. But when she came out and um, she did ease it a little bit because she came out, she was like, well, just do one and see what happens. So, and I do, my stabilizer was thick. So I said, okay, let me just stay with the two. And if it doesn't work, then that means I'll add a third. And then I'll do three cutaways of um, stabilizer, and then hopefully that'll work. And But you know what? It worked fine. It would, and I was really shocked. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is, like, so awesome. So I got to tell you, I, I loved it. I was kind of, like, oh, excited. And um, I was like, yeah, you know? And... Um, and at first I was worried about the jacket, but um, when the lady brought it over and I looked at it and I saw the material, I was like, oh, this, I know exactly how to, how to hoop this jacket. I know exactly what stabilizer to use. I didn't, I didn't need to uh, cut away. It's just one sheet of cut away did it. Um, easy. It, it, I was like, okay, I know how to do that. Not a problem. You know, so I didn't even have to like go through oh my god it's gonna get ruined i was like piece of cake so that is one thing i mean your confidence level does grow with the more that you embroider and you know it's just you just can't be afraid you, you cannot be afraid of making mistakes because that is going to hamper your ability to really really excel and just get better at what you're you know at, at, at your skill set so you know know your worth go after it don't don't let fear get into the way i mean it happens to me too you know i mean sometimes i'm afraid too because you know you don't want to screw up somebody's order you know you don't you know you don't want customers to be mad at you and stuff like that and my whole thing too is because customers talk you know <laughs> they talk you know so if you screw up somebody's order they're gonna be like that girl you know <laughs> let me tell you i went over there and you should see that what what i got back you know you know how it is okay so that's why a lot of times i am very very particular um about things because my whole thing is when especially like with the etsy shop they're all my orders if if they're they have to be perfect i want them to be perfect when they leave okay because um it's it's about reputation and stuff 
But at the same time, you know, you, you can't be scared all the time because if you get scared, you're not going to grow and you're not going to learn. Okay. So, um, you know, I really appreciated that, that Liliana really did point that out to me and stuff. And I was like, you know what, she's right. Um, I, I got to take the risk. If, if I don't take the risk, I'm not going to, I'm not going to learn. I'm not going to get better. Okay. I'm going to stay in my little comfort zone and, um, and I'm going to miss out. I'm going to, I'm really going to miss out. So, and I, and I don't want to miss out because, um, like I said, I got four years left and then I retire and this, I want this to be my second career. I really do. Um, you know, I really want to see, uh, this business grow beyond the Etsy shop. Um, I, I really want this to be something that, that I do when I retire because, you know, I don't want to do computers anymore. I'm tired. I'm all computered out. That's all, it is, you know, and stuff. Um, the other thing also that I wanted to talk to you guys about, and I, I'm going to mention it real quick, is learn about digitizing, learn about tension, um, learn about cleaning your machine, maintaining your machine. Those things are really, really important. You know, I mean, like I said, the world of embroidery, you have to, you really, really have to, um, you know, it, it's going to take time. You know, I mean, you're going to look at the machine, you, you're going to get intimidated. Um, you're going to, you know, you're going to look at it. You're going to be like, oh my God, what the hell did I do? What did I get into? Um, but as time goes on and you start taking those little baby steps and everything before you know it, you're going to be, you're going to get in there and you're going to be like, oh, this is good. Um, you're going to feel that way too. When you graduate from a single little machine and you go and you get a multi little machine. Okay. People look at these multi needle machines and they're like, what the hell? All these needles and all these, all these different color sprues and it looks so big. How the hell do you work this? And, you know, and they shy away. They, they just shy away. They go, I don't want to learn and, and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's super, it's not hard. It's really not hard. It's just, it's just, you know, getting used to it is something new, okay? So it's just getting used to it. And before you know it, you're going to be like, oh, my God, I love these multi needle machines. You can embroider anything. And then you're probably going to want another one and another one. And I'm even thinking about getting third, okay? Because now it's like I have a single needle. I have two multi needles. Um, I, I think next year um, I probably, you know, because me and my husband have been talking about it already i think next year is probably i'll hit my third i'll do my third and i think i'll stop at three or maybe i'll go to four i don't know uh we'll just see we'll see how it goes you know um you know we'll see if i if if i get to the four i i do know that this is something that i really truly love doing um and i love teaching people too um, you know, I've had a couple of people reach out to me. Um, they had issues. I don't mind video, videoing with people and trying to help them out. Um, I just like doing it. I mean, it's, it's, it's fun. And, and the way I look at it too, is when I'm helping somebody troubleshoot an issue at the same time, I'm learning with them. So, you know, it's like, I, I just, I just don't know. I, I just, I just like doing it, you know? <laughs> It's fun. Okay. So anyway, um, I know it's going to get close to nine o'clock. So I do want to go um, and say hi to people. Um, Cause Oh my God. I see a lot of people on the chat. Hello, everybody. I saw, I see diamond and Cheryl. I see um, Gail, sassy, Vivian, Dalif. I see Mary Kane and Veronica. Hey, Renee. Hey, Karen and Susie. Hey, Norma. I see, uh, Robin and Christine and Gerald. Hey, Tricia. Hey, Adrian. And talk about Adrian. Okay. I, I need to say this. Okay. And I look, I got this. My girlfriend, Adrian, started a business. Okay. She makes her own candles. Now, I'm going to tell you something. She, she's putting Yankee Candle to shame. Okay. Um, I'm not buying any other candles. I'm using hers. Her company name is Sensual Sense, okay, by Paris. She has an Etsy shop. And I'm going to tell you that um, a girlfriend of mine, she did a pop-up shop. Um, I believe it was like two, two or three weeks ago, something like that. 
And I took a girlfriend of mine, Patty, with over there. And I had lunch with Patty and I cracked up because she said, oh my God. She goes, you know, she bought some of Adrian's um, candles. And she said, oh my God, Jeanette, that, those candles are bomb. <laughs> so I had to get, you know, and she was like, how can I get more? So I told her, go to Etsy and it's sensual sense. And I'm going to type it in here so that you guys can, can, can look it up. I am telling you, um, sensual sense by Paris on Etsy. Um, these candles are the bomb. I mean, she makes them herself. And right now I have one burning. <laughs> so, I mean, I bought them by the case. Okay. I love, I love supporting small businesses. I really do. I truly do. I feel like when you when you go for the small businesses, I feel like you, you really do get better products and stuff because people put their heart and soul into it. And this is really her passion. She loves it. So Pat, um, so Agent, I am telling you, you're gonna end up with more orders because Patty's already on your site, okay? <laughs> and stuff. Um, so she is like, she's she's really, really good. So if you guys um see her her um shop out there on etsy i'm telling you give one of her candles a try you're gonna love them i mean the scents i'm never going to yankee candle again never never mm -mm. everybody loves it everybody and so hey fabulous how are you hey miss banks hey susan hey crafty puerto rican how you doing hon hey miss max Hey, Deidre, Cheryl, Yolanda. Hey, Eve from the Baby Booty. <laughs> I mentioned you today. <laughs> um, Hey, Iris, Anita. Hey, Barb, Cheryl. Oh, I was buffering. Oh, man. I hope it, it came out okay. Embroidery has, oh, Miss Banks. Embroidery has never been cheap. Purchased my first single machine over 30 years ago, and it was over 5000 At least you can purchase one now for 1000 or less. Yes, Miss Banks, it is true. And I wonder, too, uh, the, the one that you purchased 30 years ago, I wonder what type of hoop size you had. Because I know with the SC1900, the hoop size is a 5 by 7 and the machines get more pricier as the hoop gets larger. Now, one of the things too, though, is they have repositional, repositional hoops. And I do have a video on using the five by 12 repositional hoop on the um, SC1900. And that is the other thing too. I mean, I'm telling you, I mean, and it, that was one of the things that Eve mentioned in one of the videos that I watched of hers is she said it embroidery is not cheap it really isn't i mean you're going to be buying so much threads i mean i have threads behind me i have threads on the wall over here i have threads on the wall on the other side i even have threads in my closet all of different colors different uh weights and stuff so it's like you it, it is not it is not cheap and a lot of people have that misperception they think that you just buy the machine and that's it so yes, Miss Banks, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's like, oh well, you know, I mean, it, it is very it can be very, very expensive and stuff. Not only is it expensive, but it's addictive. <laughs> Sometimes I think I need a meeting. And you know what? We should do embroidery anonymous, you know. <laughs> it is addicting because what ends up happening is you start looking at blanks and you want to embroider everything. And this is another thing, Cheryl, that goes through my mind. When you go into a store like Macy's or Target and you're looking at clothes, right? Sometimes you see clothes and they have like shirts and then they have like these beautiful embroidery on the neckline and, and the, the sleeves or even at the bottom of the shirt. What goes through my mind is I can do that. I mean, I could just buy a... A, a shirt and and I could just you know modify the shirt a little bit and and I can embroider my own shirt how much they want for that shirt I $50 you know <laughs> that's what goes to my mind okay 
um, which is why my cousin Betty doesn't like to shop with me anymore. Because every time she would pick up a shirt, I would be like, how much is that? I would be like, oh, put it back. I can make that for you. <laughs> you know, so and she says I'm not fun to shop with anymore. So that's the other thing that I find that I do. Um, the magnetic hoop is mostly what I use. I purchased the four by four magnetic hoop. Yeah, the magnetic hoop is really, really, I think it makes things a lot easier because it's a flatter surface and you just use the magnets to hold your stuff in. So, I mean, I use my magnetic hoop a lot and stuff. Um, the hat hoop is a must. Yeah, floating is my preferred method and it's my... Also, Iris, um, I always like to um, to do the uh, the you know the floating because I, I just think that it makes it easier and I feel like you have better control of making sure that the item is laid out on the hoop exactly how you want it. Sometimes when you try to do it the old-fashioned way, the fabric will shift on you, so it's kind of like it, you know it's, it can be a pain and stuff. Um, I see here, uh, someone said something about unstructured hat, um, that they prefer that in structured hats, unstructured hats are a lot easier to embroider for the simple fact that they're so soft. So when they're soft, it's really easier for you to lay them, excuse me, to lay them down flat. So totally agree. Fortunately though, a lot of people that ask me for hats love the structured hats. So it's like, okay, so structured hats, it has to be, you know, and stuff. Um, hey, Susan. Hey, Miss Mendez. Um, every time I see someone post something new, I want to try it, and then I go out and purchase the stuff. Yep, I do the same. And you know what? That's kind of like my fault because I did the beanie. <laughs> I did the beanie. Um you know, for Adrian's nephew, which I have to mail them out to her and stuff. And, you know, because beanies are so popular and the winter's coming. And, you know, what I kept thinking was how kids lose their hats. And I have them right here. Um, Kids lose their hats all the time, you know? So I was like, oh my God, you know, you could put their names on it and then the kid won't lose their hat anymore. And I have to tell you, I really love the way this came out. I mean, I think these are so cute. I haven't even put them on the Etsy shop for the simple fact that I have gotten so many orders that I have been trying to um, just keep up with the orders and stuff, which I've been doing pretty good so far uh, because I don't wait for the last minute to, um, to work on an order. I usually work on orders as soon as they come in. So that way I'm not wasting any time and I can just ship them out for the sim, you know, so it's just, you know, but yeah, I mean, I, I end up every time, you know, you go to Facebook and you see somebody and border something, you're like, oh, that's cute. I want to try that too. And so, hey, Angela. Hey, B, how are you? Expensive addicted. Started a combo machine in July and my multi-needle machine will be here Wednesday. Oh, congratulations. I know you're going to be excited about that and you're going to love the multi-needle. And stuff. Um, I think she says she opted for the SWF. I wonder if that's another multi-needle brand. I've never heard of that one. And so there's so many, and that's the other thing too. So many different machines out there, so many different prices with so much different functionality. So when it when you're trying to go from a single needle to a multi-needle, it can get pretty um pretty confusing, okay. So to me, I just look at it as, you know, and sometimes people reach out to me. They're like, well, what should I get? And I don't really, you know, I know sometimes it, it can get a little frustrating because I'll be like, I really don't want to tell you what to get because it depends on your specific needs. First of all, it depends on your budget, okay, because they come in a different price range, okay? Some, some are, are at a lower price range. Some are very high. Also, not all the machines have the very same functionality, okay? Some have um, cameras to scan, some, you know, some do other stuff and, you know, and then they have different package deals. Some you can finance, some, you you know, I guess, I, I guess you can finance all of them. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, it's just so different and, and you want to, you want to buy a machine that you're comfortable with, okay? So, you know. 
I'm not saying there's bad machines out there. Um, you just have to be careful too, because you want to make sure that you get a good quality machine that's not only you're going to be comfortable with, but that's going to meet the needs that you have now and also things that you want to do in the future. So think about that. Like if you want to start a business and you want to do hats and you want to specialize in a certain area of embroidery, think about that when you're purchasing a multi needle machine because you want to make sure that that's a machine that can grow with you. So there's just so many things that you have to think about and stuff. Um, can't wait to be able to get more done. Make Christmas stockings today and embroider the names. And, you know, this is a busy season. This is a very, very busy season. I mean, it's like I was really shocked. I mean, November is not even over. And I got like 67 orders on Etsy and the other orders that are outside of Etsy. So I was just kind of like, wow, this has really been a big month for me. Um, and I'm kind of like, OK, but I've been doing pretty good. And one of the things that really stood in my mind was, you know, um, you know, I, I really love this stuff. I really, I really, I like it. I really do. And I can see myself after retirement actually doing this, you know, um, I was telling my husband, I said, maybe I can open up a shop. And, you know, um, and, and, you know, have a whole bunch of embroidery machines behind me and, and just do stuff for people, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know where this will go, but um, I will tell you, I, I'm enjoying it now. And I really liked that I got to meet a lot of people that also like to do sewing and embroidery. And I really like helping um, other folks and I get really excited. So it's like, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, I just like it, you know, and stuff. Um, let's see. Let's see. Awesome work. Oh, thank you. Let's see. I don't want to intrude on her live. Huh? Oh, Eve, you can say whatever. <laughs> um. Baby Booey, I was watching your video. Oh, oh, did you hoop the jacket or have it float on top? Okay, the way that I did the jacket was I used a Mighty Hoop. I actually embroidered this on the multi-needle machine and I used these types of hoop. I used uh, a Mighty Hoop. It was a five and a half by five and a half. And, um... You know, if you want, you can embroider that jacket on a single needle machine. You would float it. That's what I would recommend that you do. The jacket is thick. I mean, it's not like super thick, but it is too thick for you to actually put in a um in a regular hoop. So what I would do is I would just put a cutaway stabilizer in a regular hoop, and then I would spray temporary spray adhesive. I would make sure that the machine is positioned in an area where it's very clean, you know, clear um, for the simple fact that this was a very long jacket and very big. So you would make you need to make sure you have the space around it because you don't want the, the jacket to hang or anything like that. You want it sitting up on a table. So that way, while it is embroidering in the machine, you know, the weight of the jacket is not like hanging it down and it doesn't like shift. On the hoop so that's you know that's the only thing with that jacket if if i had to do it on a single needle i probably would go downstairs and do it on my dining room table where it's like clear out and i would lay the jacket on the dining room table and then put my machine under it and then i would just do it that way that's how i i would have done it if i did it on a single needle and stuff um still working but listening while i work uh um, do you use sticky stabilizer on your, mul yes, I do, Carol. I do use sticky stabilizer on the multi needle machines. Um, I actually used it today. What was it? I did, um, I embroidered a um, pocket pillow. And um, what I usually do is when I have, I have fast frames. These are called fast frames for the multi needle machines. And usually what I do is I use sticky stabilizer and I put it underneath these frames and then I put the item on top. So um, 
Yes, I do use sticky stabilizer. Um, and usually a lot of times I'll use it depending on the, the material. If I feel that I have something that is going to shift a lot and stuff like that, I'll use that. Um, I did not use that with the polyester um, shirts because I did, um, I ironed on the no-show mesh. So I felt like the no-show mesh was going to give that a little bit of strength. And then what I did with the two uh, cutaway stabilizers, I felt that gave it much more strength as well because this is very thin. Um, like I said, I mean, this is like, um, paper thin i mean really really thin and i was i'm, I'm telling you i kind of freaked out I, I was like i was having an anxiety attack okay because when i when she dropped it off i was like oh my god and i was like feeling it and i was kind of like this is not uh i never did this before so i was kind of like how am i going to do this so that's why i was like hey can i talk to you you know so i just went over there and I went with my little sample and what I did was I just explained it to her. You know, I just said, you know, um, it's a different type of fabric. It's a whole different type of fabric, which means, of course, you know, I'm not sure. And, you know, I just told her I, I really I just want to set the expectations on the table because I, I don't want any any surprises and I don't want to disappoint and stuff like that. But let me tell you, that customer, she was so nice. I mean, she was just like. Don't worry about it, Jeanette. It's, it wasn't an expensive uh, smock. If, if it ruins, it's ruined. Just try it. And if it if it doesn't work, then go to another spot and then see see if you can find the right combination to do it and stuff. And then you could do it on the other two. On the I mean the other three. So I was kind of like, oh, okay. So that kind of like to me kind of like relieved the pressure a little bit from me. But I'm gonna be honest. I kind of wanted it to work the first time, and thankfully it did. Um, but let me tell you, I am really like super proud of, of that. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I was like, wow, I did that, you know? And I even like, I called her up and, and I was like, oh my God, it came out beautiful. I loved it. I was like, I can hang out with the big boys now, you know? <laughs> so I feel like I had like graduated or something, you know, like got better and stuff. Um. Let's see, she has 73 watching and eight likes. Hit that like button. Oh, fabulous. Oh, thank you. Um, I haven't tried the one, the no-show mesh. The no-show mesh is really good. I mean, I, I kind of like it, especially if I feel that the fabric shifts a little bit. You know, no-show mesh really kind of gives it cause some kind of you know good support and stuff. So um, let's see. Thanks. So. Okay. Hi, you love watching you keep up. I love watching watching uh Eve too. I like her videos. She's awesome. I broke so many needles, not so funny, so frustrating. You are gonna break a lot of needles. I, I broke I break them myself. I, I have. I I broke, you know, I break the needles. I mean, that's why I buy them by the bulk, okay? <laughs> And that's the other thing too, that lesson, okay, lesson learned, you know, um, you got to change your needle. Okay. I mean, there were times when I was not changing the needle. I had no idea that a sewing needle goes dull. I mean, no, I didn't know. And if you don't change your needle, what happens is they go dull. They make bigger holes in your fabric. So change your needles. And I also learned the hard way. You got to clean your machine. My machine stopped, started acting all funky and everything. And I'm like, what the heck's going on with this machine? Then I'm looking at the videos and stuff. And then what do I read? You know, they, the lady showing, oh, you got to clean the machine. I was like, you got to clean the machine. I took the bobbin out. It looked like I had cotton balls in there. That's how much lint I had. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, no, I didn't know you had to clean the machine. So I had to really give it a good clean. And then after I cleaned it, it started to work um, much better again. So I mean, though, but but like I said, those are things that you learn as 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 you start embroidering and and you start gaining experience. You know, it's not like you know you just know. It's just stuff that that as time goes on, you you learn some. And sometimes the lessons you learn the hard way 
are the ones that really stick, or at least for me, you know. <laughs> so um, I had to go buy leather needles. And you know, yep, it depends on what you're working on. I keep notes on all my job. Oh, that's a good one, Barb. Look, I keep notes on all my job. I have forms for each job. I also keep a stitch out for each of my customers' folders. That's pretty neat. I need to start doing that. That's a good idea, Barb. I really like that. Because that way you know. And, and, you know, and it's funny, Barb, that you mentioned that because when I did this stitch out, what I did was in the back is what I wrote the information for this actual logo. Okay, you know, the, the how many stitches, the, the, the thread weight and all that stuff, the needle, what, what kind of stabilizer I use. I put that all in there. Um, so it's basically, you know, like what, what you're saying, but I don't, I didn't do folders and stuff, but I, I think I should do that. Um, how did you know where to begin with the stabilizers used, the thread weight and the correct needle to use? My machine's still sitting on the table in the box. Hey, Trisha. Um, when I was working on this project for this lady um, and she showed me the logo, I knew right away when it was a logo for the shirt that I knew that it was going to be a small font. So a lot of times what I do is um, I kind of like research. I'll just Google. I mean, I'll just Google and say, okay, I want to embroider a small font. Um, what is the recommended uh, needle size or what is the recommended uh, thread weight and stuff? And at the same time, too, is um, one of the things is talk to your digitizer. I have a guy that I work with um, and he digitized my logo for me. And he he's actually in our Facebook group also. And um, when I talk to him, I mean, I ask him, I, I, you know, what do you recommend? Digitizers know, you know, they they actually do do know a little bit about embroidery. They don't just um, create the files. So a lot of times he'll reach out, you know, when he creates a file for me, he'll say this is best to use with this type of needle and this type of thread. So, you know, ask the question, you know, if you have something um, digitized, the digitizer should be able to give you a hint as to what you should be using and stuff. So um, just some so that you um, tend to think about. But a lot of times it's just do your homework up front, you know, ask questions about the, the fabric, the material and everything like that. You'll be fine. You know, um, <laughs> people saying hi to mellow. <laughs> Um, let's see. Hey, Wilma, how you doing? Um, I started using my machine on Wednesday. I know exactly how you feel. My advice is willing to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. Yes, Danielle, totally agree. You cannot be afraid of the mistakes. You just can't. Okay. Um, I always say like, you know, in the IT world, we talk about research and development, okay? Like, you know, there's, it's, it's a little phase of when, you know, when a system is going up. Well, to me, um, you do research and development and embroidery too, okay? And set up a budget aside for your research and, and development, okay? For you to try new products and try new things and stuff like that. Um, you know, this was me trying something new, okay? I went over to Walmart and these hats are like $1.98. So to me, that's a small investment. And I figured, okay, let me design something and stuff. And, you know, if it comes out great, you know, I'll give it to Max. And if it doesn't, it's not a big deal. I mean, I, it's, it's $2, okay? But um, I'm learning, okay? So just something, you know, you, you have to try. You just, you know, you cannot... You cannot, um, you know, shy away from trying new things and everything like that, because what that's going to do is it's going to stop you from getting better at, at what you want to do and stuff. Thanks for talking about getting out of your comfort zone. Oh, you're welcome, Val. We all have our comfort zone. I have them. I have them. I mean, Liliana actually had to say, you know, get off that, you know, um, explore. Don't be afraid. Just talk to people. Let them know. And, and sometimes they're willing to go through that adventure with you. Just like this, you know, the lady with this company, I mean, she didn't have a problem with that. She was like, don't worry, just give it a shot. And I was just like, oh, okay. 
And look what happened, you know? So um, don't be afraid to, to try new things. Don't, don't be afraid to try new things, you know? Um, because all you're going to do is you're just going to grow. You're just going to grow. And if you make a mistake, so what? It's fabric. That's all it is. You know, it's just fabric. There's so much fabric out there. Go buy new, you know? Um, so don't worry about it. You know, and even if you're, 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 you know, um, I think it was, um, Eve from the baby booty that, that she said this once, she said, um, when she gets an item from a customer, um, and she's not sure about it, you know, she asked the customer, you know, where did you get it from? Just in case she has to replace it. And I, you know, and I was like, that's smart. So I've been using her technique too, you know, I mean, so, you know, I even asked the lady, I said, well, where did you get, where did you get the smock from? And she was like, I got it from Amazon. I said, well, um, please hold on to the link because if I ruin it, I want to replace it, you know? So, um, you know, it, I mean, things can be replaced. Now, if she would have came to me and said, this is a family hurdle from years ago, whatever, I ain't touching that, you know, <laughs> because you can't replace that, you know, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'll be like, mm. you know, I'm like, no. But um, if there's an item that they want me to to embroider, and as long as they can tell me where they purchased it from, and I can replace it and stuff like that, or I know for sure, like the jacket, I had like, that's easy. I know how to do it. Okay. The only way, the only thing that would go wrong is if the machine ate it up. Okay. And if that's the case, if that happened, then I would be like, damn, you know, I'd be mad, but I would tell the customer, okay. I'll pay for the jacket to replace it and stuff like that. Because of course it's not their fault, you know, um, and stuff. But, you know, I knew the machine wasn't going to be jamming or anything like that. I was pretty confident about that. So I was like, and I knew I could do that jacket. So I was like, I'm good, you know. Um, but don't, don't ever be afraid to do anything. Um, so glad to catch the show. Hey, Miss Parker, how you doing? Glad to have you. And stuff. Um, Hey, Ozzy. How are you? Hey, Harmony. How you doing? I see Tracy. Hey, Mary. How are you? Has anyone made a beanie on a knitting machine and then embroidered on the turn up? You know, my sister has been talking about those knitting machines that you kind of like crank and stuff. She's been talking about getting one. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if that would be okay to embroider. And I, I'm going to, because let's, let's talk about this. You know how we talk about, you got to know your fabric and all that stuff. And remember, I always say not everything can be embroidered, but there are ways around things. Okay. So. Um, when, when we're talking about the knit hats, okay, if you're talking about like the real thick, uh, string, right. I see that as those knit hats have like a lot of holes in it. Right. So the thing is for the, for you to embroider on something like that, you would have to, um, I would use sticky stabilizer and then I would use knockdown stitches or I would use an embossed file on top of that or i would do a method similar to this okay um the reason is too is because there's just so much spacing between the the the, the strings right in that knit hat that i don't know if um in, in, in a, uh, an embroidery stitch would look really good on it because it's gonna miss a couple of ports because there's just the holes are too big that's that's just how i look at it so i could be wrong I, um, we could give it a shot one day and maybe try it out, but I, somehow I just don't see it. It depends. Like I said, it depends on the, uh, on how the, the knit hat is made and stuff. Um, but it'd be interesting to see if somebody did that. Um, Flora is my favorite. It's also expensive, but it's worth it to me. Yeah, it, it is. And you know, um, I do get mine at a discount because um, I usually buy it from the sewing shop that I bought my multi-needle machines from. So because I got my multi-needle machines from her, she always gives me a nice discount and stuff. 
But I really like that thread too because um, it's shiny. It has that shiny look. And I really like that. And it really stitches really good and stuff. Um, let me see. There's always something new around the corner. Yep, there, there is. There is. Um, can you put the name of the thread, please? Oh, they had it right. It, um, Florissa had it right. It's Florina. Um, the, the lady right in front on top, but I will write it again. Farina, Farina thread. I will write it again. So that way you can see what it is, but it's, it's really good thread and stuff. Um, let's see what other questions, if there are questions out there, cause I always like to make sure I answer all that. My craft room is so unorganized. Yeah, and that's another thing too. Um, we uh, you got to be organized with this. Um, embroidery thread they each come with numbers. Okay, what I try to do is I have all my embroidery threads by number in order. Um, you know you're gonna end up buying a lot of racks for all those embroidery threads. Um, you know you there there are two ways that I notice that people kind of organize their threads. They want, they do it by number and then another, they do it by the color, the color shade, right? Like they put all the pinks together, all the, um, all the reds together, all the greens and that kind of stuff. I just do it by the number because the machine actually kind of tells you what number to pick. So I kind of like to go to the rack and then just look for that particular number. So that's how I kind of do it. But yeah, you have to get organized and this is the thing too oh i you will need more room yes iris hit it right there um hey shay shayna how you doing um yeah i mean that is the other thing too i mean this is this used to be my son's bedroom and as you can see it is now the embroidery room i have uh three embroidery machines in here a serger Cricket machine, and um, I got my Jujuki uh, sewing sewing machine. And the sewing machine, there is no space, so it is in the other room that was Cardito's room. But Cardito's in college right now. But I do have to get it out because I know that Thanksgiving is next week, and Cardito's gonna come home, and I know he's gonna go in his room and he's gonna see the sewing machine. He's gonna be like, "Really, ma?" So I'm gonna have to get it out. Uh, because I do want him to feel comfortable whenever he comes home. And I don't want him to have, uh, you know, that think that I'm trying to hint like he can't come home. You know, because I, I tell him this is your home and it's your safe place. And it's it's whenever you want to come home. So um, I want him to have his space. So I, I am going to have to get that machine out of there. Um, I know this weekend for sure and stuff. Um, I want to learn digitizing. Digitizing, I will tell you. Um, Look at John Deere. Um, he teaches digitizing. I try to learn it, but it's just not my forte. It really isn't. Um, I'm not much of a digitizer. I I just I just know the very basics, and I'm okay with just knowing the basics. I would prefer to give the artwork to a digitizer and have them digitize it, and then um, I embroider it. I like more the machine side instead of the digitizing side so you know it's like that's just me um if you can do both and you love both digitizing and embroidery then that's like really awesome because you do save a lot of money if you can digitize your own items because um you do have to pay to have somebody digitize for you and stuff you know because it is a lot of work and stuff that was my retirement starting a new business Yep, and that's what mine is. Yeah, Bev, I'm I'm there with you. Question: When you embroider those items you showed earlier, did they have the file already, or did you get digitized? Hey, uh, Veronica, no, I I had to get them uh digitized. Okay, um, you know I did. You know the lady sent me the the picture. Okay, um, and then I sent it over to a digitizer, and I had them create the file for me. Okay. Um, love this live. Learn so much. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. 
I agree. You're always looking for things to embroider. It's true. You do. <laughs> yes, the magnets are the best. I love my magnetic points. The mighty hoops. The mighty hoops are awesome too. Hi, this is my first time watching you live and I see your show. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Maria. Appreciate it. And so, uh, welcome to the channel. And stuff. My craft room so organized. <laughs> it doesn't stay that way. I try to organize my room every night before I shut down. I try to organize everything. Um, but of course, it's not going to stay that way. Hey, poop. It's not going to stay that way. It always gets messy all over again. You know, um, can you apply a lot of the basic knowledge to the embroidery machine? to your Pacific one you have. Hey, Zach, um, okay, can you apply a lot of the basic knowledge to an embroidery machine to the Pacific one you have? Okay, the, uh, to the, I guess, I guess what you're trying to, you, okay, the basic knowledge usually, okay, when you're talking, to me, basic knowledge means um, knowing about the stabilizer, the thread, and how to work the machine. Um, you know, to me, when, this is how I did it, my personal experience. Um, I started with a small machine, which is the SC1900, okay? The reason why I started with the small machine is because I wanted to learn how to sew, but at the same time, I wanted to learn about embroidery but I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. So I didn't want to like go and, you know, spend money on all these other machines, especially if I, if I didn't know this was something that I was going to want to keep doing. Okay. So um, that to me is where I started with my basic knowledge. When I started to learn about the stabilizers and the threads and the hoop sizes and everything, and I was a mess. When I was starting, I was a mess. Okay. I had no idea about the different, uh, different files, you know, for, formats, okay, about brother uh, being PES and, you know, all these other embroidery files. I had no idea about, uh, I knew I had a five by seven hoop, but, um, you know, buying embroidery files, what, how, how to look for embroidery files, how to buy a Pacific size and, and, and format and everything. All of that, Zach, will come in time. I'm telling you, you just got to do it little by little. Um, look for little, small, simple projects. Um, go to embroidery websites. Even Etsy. Etsy has some really great embroidery designs, very inexpensive. Um, buy some designs. Buy fabric. Buy fabric. Um, another thing that I did was I bought a lot of felt sheets from Michaels. Okay. If you go to Michaels, I think a felt sheet is like 10 I, no, I think it's 20 cents, 20 cents a sheet, something like that. Use the fell sheets, okay? Um, very, very inexpensive. And you can buy designs and, and try embroidering on the felt sheets, okay? Um, that way, you know, just use tearaway stabilizer on that because, you know, you're not doing anything. You're just testing designs. That way you get to learn the machine and, and you get to learn how the machine works and you know you get become familiar with the threads and your you know it, um you you know how to put in the bobbin and all that kind of stuff you know um the knowledge is all going to come in time you know as you start working on projects little by little you're going to start to build and then you know um i ended up um eve helped me a lot um you know the baby booty watching her um, whenever I got stuck, I would be like, oh my God, this, you know, and then I would just go to her channel and I would, I would search and she helped me so much in understanding stabilizers, understanding so many things. So it's like, you know, how to do the hats and all that kind of stuff. I mean, the, the information is out there, just search for it. And the biggest thing though, Zach, that I tell you is that, you know, expect the mistakes to come. And don't let that deter you from continuing to try and, and just getting it, you know, you're going to get it. It's, it's going to come and even join the Facebook groups. You know, we have a Facebook group, um, in, um, embroidery happy hour adventures. You're welcome to join that group. If you're not part of it, um, you know, and when you make a mistake or you're, you're unsure of something, ask the question there. I mean, we're, 
that's fine. I mean, the group is there so that we can teach each other. Okay. So, you know, don't be afraid of, of anything, you know, um, just, just go for it and stuff. Um, let's see, let's see, uh, try the glide thread. It has a nice shine. Oh, I got, then I have, I, thanks Susan. I'm going to look at that. No, it's not. I think the, the thread that I, the, the Florida thread, I believe is 40. I believe it's 40. It does not say anything on there. I'll look it up to double check, but I believe this is a 40, a 40 weight thread. I, that's what I believe this is. Um, cause the 60 weight is, is thinner than that. Um, stuff. Um, question, which hooping station are you using? Hey, Susan, um, the hooping station that I have is a hoop master. Um, you know, um, I like it that, you know, I, and that's another thing too. Everything, everything in embroidery is pricey, but once you have it, you have it and then you're good. Okay. Um, so that's a hooping station for, um, shirts. Look at Melo. He thinks, he thinks, he thinks I'm pointing at him. It's not you. You're looking at the hooping station. Oh my goodness. Anyway, <laughs> but that's a hoop master. That's what that is and stuff. Um, Let's see. Um, is there anything else in there? Takes a lot of time. Yep. Doing your own digitizing takes a lot of time from your ability to stitch out projects. Knowing how to digitize allows slight alterations. Yes, um, Susan, and I totally agree. I just, I just wanted to learn enough that if I have a file and if I have to remove, um, if I have to remove a stitch or something like that, or just a simple little fix that I can do it myself. Um, but I, it does take, you know, digitizing, if, if you take a class in digitizing, you're gonna notice that digitizing is not easy, okay? I mean, a digitizer is sitting there and they're drawing out every single stitch. And, you know, um, I'm sure that they have software that helps them speed up the process and stuff like that. I'm, I am not a digitizer. Um, it's just not my thing. Um, but I, 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 I just know enough to fix little things. Okay. That's, that's about, that's as far as I go. Zach, thank you. you answered my question a whole lot. <laughs> my name is Esther. I'm using my fiance's account. Hey, Esther, how you doing? <laughs> it's 40 weight. Yep. Okay. 40 weight. Thanks, Harmony. I just got the machine two days ago and I got some felt sheets. Esther, do your thing. <laughs> Please let us know what brand of 60 weight thread is and what you purchased it. Thanks, Susan. Okay. Um, if you go to um, allstitch.com, they have the Madeira threads. Okay. That is the best place that I found to buy the 60 weight threads in, the, in different colors. Okay. Now I did buy Susan, uh, Susan, I did, I mean, um, Susan, I think it's, I'm saying your name, right? I did buy this one and this is, um, 60 weight thread. But like I said, um, I don't, when I compare this to what I got from the all stitch, the Madeira 60 weight, I'm not saying that this is bad. I mean, I, you know, I used it and it's okay, but I could tell that the quality of the thread is just not as good. The one that I got from All Stitch, the Madeira, it had a more shinier look. And, um, you know, even though this is good, I I think in the future, what I'm going to do is, I, I mean, I'm of course, I'm going to keep this. I have it, you know, um, but um, I think in the future, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be getting more of the Madeira from all stitch and getting the 60 weight from them. Um, and I figure I'll just use these for just if I have a, a little small project that just so happened to show up and I don't have time to order the colors that I need the 60 weight. And if I have the color here, then I'll, I'll give this a try. But, um, you know, like I said, it's not bad, but I, it's just, um, and you don't get that much. This is about 1100 yard. And I think with the um, 
the material, I got, I got more, I got more threads. So, um, they had little bigger cones. So, um, to be honest, I, I feel like, uh, all, all stitch is really the way to go with, with the, the 60 weight thread. I would get that, you know, um, that's what I, I would recommend and stuff, but you know, um, all, all stitch, um, you know, 60 weight thread is not something that is so easy to find anywhere. Okay. Because when I went to the sewing shop, all, all she had was, was this thread and this is a 40 weight and 40 weight thread. You can find them anywhere. You can find them anywhere. But when it comes to the 60 weight there, you know, you really have to search for that. You really do. And stuff. Mellow is a sweetheart. Oh, thanks, Carol. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really great appreciate you and your page. Oh, you're welcome, Esther. Anytime and stuff. Maybe I'll just do the art and get it digitized. You can, Bev. You, yeah. I mean, and the thing is too is sometimes some digitizers are not that expensive, you know, um, and stuff. So, you know, love all such. I like them too, and you know they're really great and with their shipping and everything. I mean. That has really been like my go-to place for my threads. I am trying to, as I go through the small combs, I'm trying to replace all my small combs with bigger combs because um, they last a lot longer and stuff. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and experience. You had kept me from giving up on embroidery. I'm not making a little money. So my first embroidery. Oh, congratulations, Leanne. I think that's so awesome and stuff. No, but do not, no, Lillian, don't ever, don't quit. You're going to make, believe me, we all make mistakes, all of us. And we all freak out. I freaked out. And that when she dropped off those things, I was like, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? I had my moment, but we're get, you get through it. You get through it. I mean, I thought about what, um, what, what uh, Susie at the, the you know, Susie's quilt shop, what she says, she says, just fabric. There's lots of fabric. Get more fabric. That's all. You mess up, get more fabric. And I'm like, you know, she's right. I mean, you know, it's true. And then what Liliana told me, don't be afraid. You know, just do it. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, that's fine. So, you know, we just have to keep, it, you know, keep it reminding each other that, you know, we just got to do our thing, you know, <laughs> just keep going and stuff. Um, when should we mail out our gifts? Hey, Cheryl. Okay. All gifts should be mailed out by December 11th. For those of you guys that are part of the gift exchange, okay, um, all the gifts should be mailed out by December 11th. So I hope you guys have started your little, um, your little, uh, gifts and stuff. And remember, you're not supposed to spend more than $15 in materials. Get as creative as you want. If cricket is your thing, that's fine. If um, sewing is your thing, embroidering is your thing, whatever it is, um, it's just you know I I think it's going to be really awesome because now we um, we exchange you know we're we're giving to each other you know so I think that is like really cool. Harmony says I never make mistakes. Girl, you trip. <laughs> um. So let me see. Um, NC Supply has good prices on the 500. Oh, I got to check them out too then. Okay. I have an order to embroider some handkerchiefs. What stabilizer should I use? Oh, handkerchiefs. Handkerchiefs are pretty thin. They are pretty thin. You know what? Um, Juanita, what I would do is make sure that you get samples <laughs> of those handkerchiefs so you can practice. But, um, all right, my guess, okay, and maybe if E's watching, maybe because she's, she's been embroidered for quite some time, maybe she could chime in and, and see if maybe she can provide advice too. I would probably guess, um, I would probably, it's a handkerchief. So I would try to iron on no-show mesh, probably on that. Um, see, the thing is with cutaway, 
is you cut you cut it out, but then it's like you, you see that stabilizer there. And you don't want to do that on a handkerchief. So my guess would be no show stabilizer. I would try that. Um, but the yeah. The you know what you could do is you can Google <laughs> on YouTube and see if anyone out, out there has a video on embroidering handkerchiefs, that would be kind of interesting to do. Do hankies as wedding gifts. I use one or two layers of sticky tear, tear away stabilizers. Oh, do you do the same for dinner napkins? Okay, for dinner napkins, what I do is I use um, tear away stabilizer for the dinner napkins. And then when I am done with the dinner napkins, I take it over to the heat press and I put tender touch on the back of the um, of the of the embroidery. So that way it gives it a more flush uh, look. And now that I think about it, you know, Dev may have brought up a good point. That would probably not be a bad idea. Um, Two layers of sticky. See, that's the thing. That's kind of tricky because it's it's thin fabric, just like this. See, with this, using the two two parts of see, it's inside the jacket. Nobody sees it, right? Because you know they wear it and nobody sees that or anything like that. Um, but a handkerchief, a handkerchief, people kind of like wave it, kind of, and they they're gonna see the back. You're gonna want to cover that. I I think I would put like maybe tender touch in the back just to cover that. Um, but the thing is too, is a handkerchief is supposed to be lightweight. It's not supposed to be heavy. So my concern with a handkerchief is if you use like cutaway or something like that, you're kind of adding weight to the handkerchief. So um, yeah, we'll have, you know what? We should, maybe this should be the project of the week. Let's do handkerchiefs and see how they come out and stuff. Um, is very thin fabric. So I think no show mesh is a good idea. Yeah, see, that's the thing. And and the thing is you don't want to add too much weight to the um to the handkerchief because first of all, cut away, if you use cut away on the handkerchief, then it is gonna look tacky, right? But there is tear away. I have a tear away that I got. And it's it's pretty um it's these are the ones that I use for my napkins. Okay, and I these are the ones that I use. It's called um this is the one that I buy, the new brothery thing. Um and I use these for the dinner napkins. And um they're they're not like paper paper. I don't know if you guys can see the fiber, but it's kind of like um rough in a way but um but you can tear it see it does tear but uh this probably could be good for the napkin but um but i i don't when you tear it away it may look a little funky and then you might you might want to cover that up with tender touch so i i would try I would try to get some, um, make sure you get some samples so you can try it. Try the no-show the no show mesh on one. And then if you have this type of cutaway stabilizer, try the cutaway stabilizer and then try with your heat press putting um, tender touch behind it and see how, see which one comes out better, you know? Um, and then ask them if they're planning on washing that because if they're planning on washing that, then it's kind of like, hmm, I don't know how it's going to be in the, the wash. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, but um, yeah, now you got me thinking and now I'm like, oh, that's be interesting to try out and stuff. So maybe I'll go to Walmart and buy a pack of handkerchiefs and see how I can embroider those things. <laughs> um, there is no backing. I would use two layers of wash away stabilizers. Okay. That that's another option there. Um, that is a good, yeah. And do matching bobbin threads. So the 
back is found. Oh, that's a good idea from Susan too. If you match the um the bobbin thread to the top thread, um, you know, and recently I purchased black bobbins for my multi-needle machine. Um yeah, I get the pre-cut uh stabilizer too from Amazon. I I mean I kind of like the pre-cut. I mean, I do sometimes buy the rolls because um you know, they are cheaper, but they're cheaper because they, they're not cut, you know, but, um, oh, this is cut away. This is tear away. So, um, you know, you're paying for them to cut it for you, but the thing is, it does make it a lot easier. It really does. Um, and stuff. So, but anyway, but guys, I am past the hour. Okay. I am past the hour. Cause as always, I talk a lot. So anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this um this embroidery happy hour. I as always I always enjoy spending Fridays with you guys and stuff. I appreciate so much for all of the support and everything. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you have not joined our Facebook group, please join it. It's called Embroidery Happy Hour Adventures. And um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and I guess I will see you guys next Friday at eight o'clock again. So guys, love you all. Please be safe and have fun sewing and embroidering. And don't be afraid to try anything new. Okay. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Have a good night.